Section 33 of The Promulgation of Universal Peace, Volume 1. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. This recording by HearHis.com. The Promulgation of Universal Peace, Volume 1, by Abdul Baha Abbas, Section 33. Discourses of Abdul Baha Delivered in New York and Fanwood, May 26, 1912, at Mount Morris Baptist Church, 5th Avenue, and 126th Street, New York. Notes by Esther Foster. As I entered the church this evening, I heard the hymn, Nearer My God to Thee. The greatest attainment in the world of humanity is nearness to God. Everlasting glory, honor, and grace, and beauty which comes to man comes through nearness to God. All the prophets and apostles longed and prayed for nearness to the Creator. How many nights they passed in sleepless yearning for this station! How many days they devoted to supplication for this attainment, seeking ever to draw nigh unto Him! But nearness to God is not an easy accomplishment. During the time His Holiness, Jesus Christ, was upon the earth, mankind sought nearness to God. But in that day no one attained save a few His disciples. Those blessed souls were confirmed with divine nearness through the love of God. Divine nearness is dependent upon attainment to the knowledge of God, upon severance from all else save God. It is contingent upon self-sacrifice, and to be found only through forfeiting wealth and worldly possessions. It is made possible through the baptism of water and fire revealed in the Gospels. Water symbolizes the water of life, which is knowledge, and fire is the fire of the love of God. Therefore, man must be baptized with the water of life, the Holy Spirit, and the fire of the love of the kingdom. Until he attains these three degrees, nearness to God is not possible. This is the process by which the Baha'is of Persia have attained. They gave their lives for this station, sacrificed honor, comfort, and possessions, hastened with the utmost joy to the place of martyrdom. Their blood was spilled, their bodies were tortured and destroyed, their homes pillaged, their children carried into captivity. They endured all these conditions joyfully and willingly. Through such sacrifice, nearness to God is made possible. And be it known that this nearness is not dependent upon time or place. Nearness to God is dependent upon purity of heart and exhilaration of the spirit through the glad tidings of the kingdom. Consider how a pure, well-polished mirror fully reflects the effulgence of the sun no matter how distant the sun may be. As soon as the mirror is cleaned and purified, the sun will manifest itself. The more pure and sanctified the heart of man becomes, the nearer it draws to God, and the light of the sun of reality is revealed through it. This light sets hearts aglow with the fire of the love of God, opens in them the doors of knowledge, and unseals the divine mysteries, so that spiritual discoveries are made possible. All the prophets have drawn near to God through severance. We must emulate those holy souls and renounce our own wishes and desires. We must purify ourselves from the mire and soil of earth contact until our hearts become as mirrors of clearness and the light of the most great guidance reveals itself in them. His Holiness Baha'u'llah proclaims in his hidden words that God inspires his servants and is revealed through them. He says, Thy heart is my abode. Purify it for my descent. Thy spirit is my outlook. Prepare it for my manifestation. Therefore, we learn that nearness to God is possible through devotion to him, through entrance into the kingdom and service to humanity. It is attained by unity with mankind and through loving-kindness to all. It is dependent upon investigation of truth, acquisition of praiseworthy virtues, service in the cause of universal peace, 
and personal sanctification. In a word, nearness to God necessitates sacrifice of self, severance, and the giving up of all to Him. Nearness is likeness. Behold, how the sun shines upon all creation, but only surfaces that are pure and polished can reflect its glory and light. The darkened soul has no portion in the revelation of the glorious effulgence of reality, and the soil of self, unable to take advantage of that light, does not produce growth. The eyes of the blind cannot behold the rays of the sun. Only pure eyes, with sound and perfect sight, can receive them. Green and living trees can absorb the bounty of the sun. Dead roots and withered branches are destroyed by it. Therefore, man must seek capacity and develop readiness. As long as he lacks susceptibility to divine influences, he is incapable of reflecting the light and assimilating its benefits. Sterile soil will produce nothing, even if the cloud of mercy pours rain upon it a thousand years. We must make the soil of our hearts receptive and fertile by tilling, in order that the rain of divine mercy may refresh them and bring forth roses and hyacinths of heavenly planting. We must have perceiving eyes in order to see the light of the sun. We must cleanse the nostril in order to scent the fragrances of the divine rose garden. We must render the ears attentive in order to hear the summons of the supreme kingdom. No matter how beautiful the melody, the ear that is deaf cannot hear it, cannot receive the call of the supreme concourse. The nostril that is clogged with the dust cannot inhale the fragrant odors of the blossoms. Therefore, we must ever strive for capacity and seek readiness. As long as we lack susceptibility, the beauties and bounties of God cannot penetrate. His Holiness Christ spoke a parable in which he said his words were like the seeds of the sower. Some fall upon stony ground, some upon sterile soil, some are choked by thorns and thistles, but some fall upon ready, receptive, and fertile ground of human hearts. When seeds are cast upon sterile ground, no growth follows. Those cast upon stony ground will grow a short time, but lacking deep roots will wither away. Thorns and thistles destroy others completely, but the seed cast in good ground brings forth harvest and fruitage. In the same way, the words I speak to you here tonight may produce no effect whatever. Some hearts may be affected, then soon forget. Others, owing to superstitious ideas and imaginations, may even fail to hear and understand. But the blessed souls who are attentive to my exhortation and admonition, listening with the ear of acceptance, allowing my words to penetrate effectively, will advance day by day toward full fruition, yea, even to the supreme concourse. Consider how the parable makes attainment dependent upon capacity. Unless capacity is developed, the summons of the kingdom cannot reach the ear. The light of the Son of Truth will not be observed, and the fragrances of the rose garden of inner significance will be lost. Let us endeavor to attain capacity, susceptibility, and worthiness, that we may hear the call of the glad tidings of the kingdom, become revived by the breaths of the Holy Spirit, hoist the standard of the oneness of humanity, establish human brotherhood, and, under the protection of divine grace, attain the life everlasting and eternal. Thou forgiving God, these servants are turning to thy kingdom and seeking thy grace and bounty. God, make their hearts good and pure in order that they may become worthy of thy love. Purify and sanctify the spirits that the light of the sun of reality may shine through them. Purify and sanctify the eyes that they may perceive thy lights. Purify and sanctify the ears, in order that they may hear the call of thy kingdom. Lord, verily, we are weak, but thou art mighty. Verily, we are poor, but thou art rich. We are seekers, and thou art the one sought. Lord, have compassion upon us and forgive us. 
bestow upon us capacity and readiness in order that we may be responsive to thy favors attracted to thy kingdom enkindled with the fire of thy love and resuscitated through the breasts of thy holy spirit in this radiant century thou art powerful thou art almighty thou art merciful and thou art most generous end of section 33 recording by hearhis.com